Okay, at, at the end I would like to make some remarks about a comparison of remediation measures applied after the accidents in Chernobyl and in the, in the Fukushima the Ichi nuclear power stations. This presentation is based on the presentation given at the IAPA Congress in 2016 in South Africa. I would like to say thank you to the co-authors and I'm also one of the authors. That's why I felt free to take this as a starting point. We have already seen this picture again Chernobyl, same levels as Fukushima, but the area affected is much larger. Uh, when we compare now the affected areas a bit in more detail, then uh, we have, when we look at the total deposition to terrestrial and freshwater systems in, in Europe, then we have 64 Peter Becquerel of season 134. One Peter Becquerel is 10 to the 15th, 15 Becquerel. And two to three uh, Peter Becquerel deposited in the mainland Japan. And if you look at the area with, with levels of more than 100 kilobecker per square meter, this is 56,000 in Chernobyl, but only 3,000 in Fukushima. So you see that the seriousness of these two accidents is different. Uh, and the same is for cesium-134, slightly different numbers. But the point is here that Chernobyl releases affected a much larger area than Fukushima. Uh, when we look at the landscapes affected, I mean Chernobyl at that time we had mostly collective farming and private farming, agriculture, forests, is a big uh, importance of mushroom and berries because we were, many areas were forested and sheep uh, the land is not very fertile the use of uh, fertilizer was not very high at these days so see agriculture in general was not very intensive In Fukushima, I mean, we have two main elements. First is the agricultural areas, in particular the rice paddies. But there's also a large area of forested catchments which have been effective with steep slopes which cannot be used for agriculture. Um, so, and then if we compare uh, the two accidents, I mean, for Chernobyl, uh, and for both Fukushima, they started before or around the start of the growing period. In the population, the population density in Chernobyl is moderate, is low to moderate and there's no real pressure to use the land that's why also the intensity of the agriculture was uh, was relatively low at this time in fukushima is a bit different population density is relatively high and there's also some people want to use or have to use the available arable parts because there is a lot of mountains and the areas which can be used for agriculture is limited. So the intensity of agriculture is low to medium in Chernobyl and high in Fukushima. The key products here are milk, meat, grain and potatoes in Chernobyl. Uh, 
Fukushima is rice, fruit, leafy vegetables, fruit crops, grain, flowers. And the movement of cesium radionuclides in the landscape is low, but high in Fukushima due to the steep slopes. And if we then look at the internal exposure, uh, if we look at the, for example, at the fraction of salts with high organic matter, and high organic matter is one indicator for, or can be an indicator for enhanced uptake of cesium from soil by plants. And in general, this is moderate to high. In Fukushima, this is pretty low. Use of potassium fertilizers is very low to moderate in Chernobyl, but it was always high in Fukushima due to the intensity of the agriculture. So this leads to a moderate to very high availab availability of radiocesium for root uptake, but a low availability, low availability the moderate availability in Fukushima Taichi. Transfer of animal products is moderate or high, but low in Fukushima. Intake of local food in general was high and very high because people used it, but, but low in Fukushima. There's a lot of food is bought in the supermarket. And the intake of, of wild food growing in forests, mushroom, berries, was very, it's very popular in the affected areas of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, but, but not so pronounced in Fukushima. So this means uh, for the final consequences, all these factors interact and have to be evaluated for an evaluation and assessment of the dose. And so uh, if you look at the important pathways in Chernobyl, uh, internal and external exposure is about half-half, is about the same. And one part is also internal dose from wild foods, from, from forests. And this is less in the Fukushima case. And I think this brown part here is also looks for me pretty high. I think it, it could be could be less, but this is a, uh, a snapshot from the Fuku, from the Kabuchi village in the Fukushima prefecture and has been published. When we look for the goals of recovery, I mean, the goals of decontamination. Um, of course, the main goal is to reduce doses on the long term. And in both cases, Fukushima and Chernobyl, uh, one millisievert per year was or is applied on both sides. In the Chernobyl case, it was only uh, put in force from 1990. One, five years after the accident, but now it's the same. And of course, another goal is to enable residents of contaminated areas to return back to their normal life. However, nevertheless, the priorities in Chernobyl and Fukushima were a bit different. Uh, in Chernobyl, more than 100,000 people were living in areas with more than one millisievert per year, and so priority was given to remediate, to reduce their effective dose rate. And uh, the return of people to evacuated areas in Chernobyl was considered difficult because in parts of the Chernobyl exclusion zone, there were also relevant depositions of strontium and in particular of plutonium contaminations and it was considered as too difficult to 
uh, to remediate that. So low priority was given, or relative low, but was given to return of people. But this is also something to do with the pressure of people on land. And Ukraine is a larger country, more land is available, less people, so this was then the, the way forward. In Fukushima, I mean, there was the idea to re-establish an acceptable basis of fully functioning societies in all affected areas, and also to revitalize these areas, because this area also uh, had some economic impact, uh, so a, a reduction of economic uh, activities, and the idea was to to revitalize this. And one factor was here also this uh, enormous efforts for the monitoring of vice. I think in one year, say, about millions of vice bags are monitored. Again, a comparison for the long-term dose of cesium-134 with agricultural in the action of with agricultural practice and living habits. We have here the intensity of agriculture, high in Fukushima, low in Chernobyl, use of potassium fertilizer is different, fraction of organic salts with no nutrients is different, availability of cesium and soil is different intake of local food is different. So by the end of the day, the contribution is of ingestion is low in Fukushima, but high in Chernobyl. And if we look for the comparison of the radiological criteria, we have seen long-term goals is the same. They were different approaches in the beginning of, the of this accident in, uh, in, in, in the USSR, in the Soviet Union, uh, and in Fukushima it was 5 millisievert for the first year, and then from September 2011, 1 millisievert per year was given as an annual dose. If we convert this doses to an ambient dose rate. This means in mm, applied in the beginning, uh, uh, remediation measures were introduced for an ambient dose rate of 2.2 microsieverts per hour. Whereas in Fukushima, if we exclude the natural background from this point, to three microsievert per hour. It is 0.19 microsievert per hour. So this is a factor of of 10, more than 10. And also we had in both countries we had a modification of the activities in, in food standards. In both cases, they were gradually uh, said declined gradually. In Chernobyl, uh, okay, we have there's a categorization of the land according to the cesium deposition to soil. Below 37, it's not contaminated, it's considered as not contaminated between 37 and 1 1.185 kilobecker per square meter. Remediation is done for so-called sensitive salts, which are salts as wet peat or acid sandy salts, which tend to have an higher, higher uptake of season by plants. And then the intensity of the remediation activities increased with the uh, increased with the condemnation level. And above 1,480 kilobecker per square meter, there was no further e economic activity 
because this was uh, evacuated or people were relo relocated. In Fukushima, if you look at the uh, designation of remediation areas, there were three zones. Uh, the green zones is less than 20 millisievert per year, yellow zone 20 to 50 millisievert per year, and red zone uh, more higher than 50 millisievert per year. And then outside, outside this area, uh, these zones with, with this yellow, and all the colored areas, this yellow, they were remediated or are still under remediation. If you look at the comparison of the remediation approach, we have similarities as in both cases, restriction, food restrictions and monitoring was applied to identify high levels of, uh, of activities. Food standards were implemented and there was a decondemnation with priority given to residential areas. In Chernobyl, focus was given to both external and internal dose, whereas in Fukushima, focus was given to external dose only because due to other measures, internal dose was pretty low. In the areas remediated in Chernobyl are all settlements with Average doses above one millisievert per year, and in, Chern in in Fukushima, in this intensive condom countermeasure area. The approach was a bit different. In in Chernobyl, focus on measures was given with to to prioritize measures which have a high effectiveness dose reduction. And to find out, there was also the application of cost-benefit analysis. So the question was how much money is needed to reduce the dose if you have two options. And usually the option was taken which was more effective in terms of efforts, financial efforts, and, and, and workforce, etc. Uh, this was not necessarily the case in Fukushima. There was the priority to have a rapid implementation to try to reduce the activities as, as fast as possible, taking into account also social and cultural factors and anxi anxi anxieties of the people, concerns of the people. This means uh, countermeasures were also applied in areas which were not very much affected. I mean, the reason for that is probably uh, at that time, the former Soviet Union uh, had maybe some, some economic problems Whereas um, Japan is a more is a wealthy society, and there were sufficient financial resources available to implement all these uh, factors. So the costs here were nevertheless in, in Chernobyl high, but but much higher in in, in Fukushima. Uh, and for, so for the forest, whereas in, in, in Chernobyl, it just some advice was given what to do in the forest and what to collect in the forest. In the case of Fukushima, there was also decontamination measures were done on the border of the forest, which are close to houses. Uh, 
if you look at the remediation measures applied in the residential areas, they are partly sometimes similar. I mean, declamation, high pressure washing, removal of deposits, etc. Uh, but also, there are also some differences. For example, uh, topsoil removal, pairing of roots, high pressure washing, this was more done in, uh, in Fukushima, also reflecting the more intensive use of, of the land. And if you look at important countermeasures uh, for Chernobyl in the agricultural area, uh, use of Chernobyl, use of uncontaminated feedstuffs before slaughter, if possible, radical improvement of pastures has been deep plowing, resowing, application of lime and and potassium fertilizer, use of Prussian blue to reduce cesium resorption in the gut of animals and also live monitoring. Um, I mean the, mon the, the animals they were live monitored with a, with a measurement device so to say measuring the dose rate on special parts of the animal on, on, for example on the hip and their calibration curves exist which convert the gamma dose rate measured uh, on, on, on the hip of the animal to the contamination of cesium in, in meat. This was a pretty effective uh, measure and you could determine the concentration in meat without killing the animal. In Fukushima Daiichi, of course, this was removal of plants, topsoil removal, drainage of suspended soil from paddies, deep plowing, use of extra fertilizers. This was the main uh, countermeasures in agriculture. And again, here a comparison uh, in of, of agricultural remediation measures in Chernobyl and Fukushima. In Fukushima, priority was given to clean feeding, uh, life monitoring, and brush and blue to animals was not applied. Radical improvement, but here more soil removal, tillage reversal, treating uh, paddy fields, removal of plants soil hardening and removal. So there was a slightly different uh, spectrum on countermeasures applied in Chernobyl and Fukushima. And with the forest remediation, there were in both cases restrictions for the access not to enter the forest and also restriction harvesting of food products and collection of firewood. Or also local monitoring. Monitoring is always important to, to know where is the contamination uh, and what is the time trend. And for forests in Chernobyl, focus was given to provide information and advice on regarding the spatial variation of contamination for example, which mushrooms to avoid, where and when to collect wood, where and when to collect wild products and to hunt animal, animals, and also to provide tree felling schedules, because there's also a little seasonal variation of cesium in, in, in wood. In Fukushima, it was removed service material from 20 millimeters from, from 20 meters from the border and uh, an action level for the use of wood for mushroom production was implemented. So, if you look at the waste generation, 
uh, in Chernobyl about thousand settlements were decontaminated and the waste was buried nearby and focus was given to such remediation options which did not generate waste or not too much waste in Fukushima I mean as you know there was a huge generation of waste and also linked to high costs and therefore we had all these uh, uh, specs in this temporary storage sites which are now uh, which are now uh, will be removed I think until 2024 then all these specs will be uh, stored in the interim storage site close to the plant and finally I have a summary of uh, and if you look for the radiological consequences we can see that the consequences of the accident in Fukushima are much lower than that of Chernobyl however the scale of remutation of, of efforts implemented is comparable in both cases for remediation a long-term goal was set of one millisievert per year however in particular in the beginning the radiological criteria for remediation in Japan are lower than those in the USSR in Japan uh, uh, the limits for foods were reduced and therefore we had also relatively high costs in, in Japan and the, Japan also the decision was made to remediate land this, this was that was evacuated in Chernobyl the consideration of those saved and related costs was an important part of the Fukushima or of the remediation strategy and for Fukushima the remediation of affected areas regarding uh, radiological and social and cultural conservation a very high priority thank you very much